Hello, everybody. I'm John Mello. I am the founder of PayHouse. We build applications for people using no-code tools like Bubble.io, Integramat, uh, and a variety of other no-code tools. Today, what we are going to talk about is a very, I want to say, difficult concept for people who are just starting to use Bubble. I see a lot of people struggle with wrapping their minds around what this is, and that is custom states. Really what a custom state enables you to do is store a temporary piece of data on an element. Now, this is a client side action. So if you're familiar with the difference between client side and server side actions, this all happens locally on the user's device or browser that they're working in. All right, so these actions tend to be a little bit quicker. And that's part of the reason why people like using custom states is that they're faster. It doesn't require a page load. If you're building a single page application, and this is pretty common if you're doing a mobile first or mobile only app, uh, then cause you're, you're going to make, you're probably going to want to use custom states at some point because they don't have that page load time that uh, multi-page applications do. Temp and the big thing to remember is that custom states are a temporary value. If you refresh the page, you lose them. It's gone. It's gone. But the flexibility in the type of data that you can store on elements, you can store lists, you can store images, you can store numbers, anything, anything really, any piece of data, any custom data type that you've set up in your app, you can store as a custom state. What do I have here so far? On the page already, I'm starting out with some elements, All right, So I've got three groups that contain a view and a button. Now the goal here is going to be to wire this up using custom states so that the, uh, when you click this, it hides view one and shows view two. And similarly here, if you click this, it hides view two and shows view three. And, and so, and we could cycle all the way through, all right, which is pretty common. You can see that my page is, is prefixed to be a mobile size. If I preview this, Right, you can see, like, and then I and I'm gonna hit Control Shift I. If you work in Chrome, you can access Chrome Developer Tools by using that shortcut, and you can see that you can really pick, choose from a few different devices here. Let's start hiding and displaying these groups using custom states. So I will put a link to this editor so you can see how I set this up. You'll notice that the groups are the same height. All right, so the first thing that we notice is that all of the views are on the page at the same time. We don't want that, right? We want only view one to display when the page is loaded. So let's start there. So if I go back here, and let's first go to V2, let's hit this group, and let's uncheck this page is visible on page load. I'm sorry, let's uncheck this element is visible on page load. And let's uncheck here. This element is visible on page load. We don't want view. We only want view one to show. So if we preview that, you can see that we've only got view one now. Okay. So now let's show view two when this button is clicked using a custom state. Okay. So I'm going to double click on the page at the page level. I tend to set my custom states at the page level because you can technically store a custom state on any elements on the screen of any element on your page but it's hard to keep track of where they are so i would say that in most cases 99 percent of the time you can store them at the page level you can you can have them being at the page level and it's just easy to have all of your custom states on one element which is the parent element of all the other elements here the page all right, so let's add a new custom state and we'll just call this V for view. All right, state type is going to be right in here. This look should look familiar at this point, right? If you've looked, if you've watched my video on data, this is like when you add a column, you have to specify these, the column name and the type of data that's going to be stored in that column. Same concept here. All right, so we're going to use text here and it's not going to be a list. It's just going to be a single value. All right, and then you see the text, and then we'll talk about this default value in a second. All right, so now, now we have our uh, custom state called V for view set up here. So what we can do is click on view two. 
All right, let's click on this the button V2 that's in group one. We, again, what we want to happen here is we want to display V2 when this is clicked. So I'm gonna hit start edit workflow. So button V2 is clicked, the event gets created. Click here to add an action, go down to element actions and hit set state. What element do we wanna set the state on? Well, we only set up custom states on one element on the whole page, it's gonna be the index. And you'll see that the V is already there, All right? So we created it here. This is all, uh, I forgot to mention that this is called the element inspector. Gives you all the information about the element, what events they're associated, what actions associated, and what custom states can be stored on them. And we have our V here. Okay, so we go back, V, and the value is going to be V2. All right, when the V2 button is clicked, the value is going to be set to V2. All right, then we're going to click here. All right, now what we need to do is set a conditional that when the state V2, when the index is V is equal to V2, show this group. All right, so we go back, we're gonna click on group two here. We're gonna to go to the conditional tab and we're gonna say when, when indexes the page, this is V is V2, this element is visible and you check that off. All right, so let's preview that. Now check it out, we only have view, view one here. And when we click on V2, boom, V2 comes up. So that is successful. That's the way that we want it to happen. When we click this, we V2. Uh, another useful tip about working with custom states. You can't really see what the actual value of the custom state is. There's no visibility into that for you as the developer or the user. So what we can do while we're building this is add some uh, kind of a window into that. And we'll just call this, let's add it. I just put a text on the screen here, view. Let's call this view equal to indexes V. All right, and then let's move this to the top of the page. If you hit, if you go here, we're in a column layout for this page. If I do this and then go into layout and I hit make first, that'll bring it all the way up to the top. We'll also center it and make it an un, not a fixed width, all right? So now you can see, let's just go back and do that again. View equals nothing, but if I click V2, you can see that view equals V2. All right, we've got that down here. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Let's make this a zero height. We don't want to take up that much space. All right, this is gonna go away. This is just temporary. This is just so we can see what we're working with. We're just trying to see if the values that we intend to set here are actually what's being set. Okay, so now let's do V3. Let's do, let's program this next one, V3. All right, so when you click View 3, start edit workflow. And again, we're gonna do the same thing here. Click here to add an action, element action, set state. Element is going to be the index again, V. And the value here is going to be V3. And then again, we go back to our V3 and we go to our conditional tab or our, our group three rather, go to our conditional tab. And we say when index V is V3, this element is visible. You can check that off. Okay, so let's preview that. And just see what we got going on here, right? We got view equals nothing on the page load. We click view two, view two comes up, we click view three, and view three comes up. It actually replaces it, right? So now the only, and you can see that we have our window here is correct, view three, like this is correctly showing. Now what we wanna do is get rid of V1, right? We don't want V1 here. So let's go back here and let's uncheck this to be visible on page load as well. This element is visible on page load. All right, and then let's add the condition here when indexes V is V1, this element is visible, and then that's true. Okay, now we can kind of go back. Now we can go back to what I mentioned before about the default custom state, and we can set this to be V1. So we know that when the page is loaded, the, uh, the custom state of V is automatically going to be set to V1 so that our group one is displayed.
okay? And let's also collapse when hidden, right? So if you see this, you don't want this big space here, right? So we're gonna hit collapse when hidden when all of the groups are, for all of, all of our groups here, we're gonna hit collapse when hidden. Collapse when hidden, V2 is already done, and then this one too, collapse when hidden. All right, so now when I preview, we're gonna go V2, right? V2, V3, see? You can't really tell, the to the user, you can't really tell that the uh, page is changing, It's not, that it's shifting, because it's all the same size. All right, let's just program this last button. Let's just program this last button for view one. All right, when this is clicked, element actions, set state, index, v, e, v1. All right, so now we should have our complete cycle here. View equals V1, we see that when the page is loaded. View two, view three, and we can cycle through this endlessly. All right, and that is a very seamless user experience. The user should not know that they're tra transitioning groups. It should just appear to them like it's, uh, it's just changing views. Now, one problem in working with custom states is as I mentioned, if you refresh the page, you lose the data. It's a temporary value stored on the elements. So say we're in view three here. If I refresh the page, it's gone. I'm back to view one. Now, in some cases that might be beneficial, but in others, it may not be. So let's explore another way that we can navigate through these different groups using a similar methodology to custom states, but one that's a little bit more permanent that you won't lose if you refresh the page. And that we do with URL parameters. So, so I'm going to delete all the logic that I just created. First off, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of my workflows here. Um, let's get rid of, let's also get rid of the conditions here. Remove the conditions. Uh, but we'll leave the uh, element is not visible on page load and the collapse the group when hidden. We're going to need that anyway. All right, that, that won't change. So we'll leave that there. All right, so what should happen when we click on V2 now? This is going to be a little bit different, right? So I'm going to hit start edit workflow. And what we're going to do is go click here to add another action. And this time we're going to go to navigation and we're going to go to go to page. All right, the page that we're going to is the same one. We're still going to the index. We're going to send more parameters to the page. We're going to add another parameter and we'll use the same nomenclature that we used before u v is equal to v2 okay and i actually am going to go back to the let's let's make this visible on page load just for this first part here and then we'll turn that off in a second so if i refresh the page now watch what happens when i hit v2 Check, watch the top url here boom v equals v2 now that's a parameter in the url it's part of my url this is useful for a number of reasons making unique uh views for different pages this is very similar to how slugs work where you can create a unique view for database object so if i go to view two now this expression is a little bit different we're going to say get data from page url v is v2 this element is visible. So same type of conditionals here. Conditional logic does not change. It's just a slightly different expression to look up to the page URL or parameter in the page URL, as opposed to the custom state that's being stored on the page, but very similar. So now if I click view two, boom, we get our view to be two. And we also have this parameter set up here. Okay. So let's continue that. Let's do that for the rest of the page as well. So we're going to say, for this one, uh, we'll program this button. And I'll do this manually again, but uh, there's a shortcut here. So we'll go to navigation, go to page, index, send more parameters to the page, add another parameter, V is equal to V2. V2. 
three rather. We're doing B three now. B three. And then we go to B three. We go to we go to group three rather. We say when again get data from page URL. V is V three. This element is visible, right? So this gets repetitive. Okay, let's preview that and see where we're at. All right, we click on view two, we get view two, we click on view three, we get view three, all right? So now let's deal with our view one, right? We have to start out with nothing. So let's go, you can't exactly set a default value in the same way that we did before, but, but, but what we can do is create a condition on the page load. So let's go to our workflow tab. Let's click here to add another event. We're going to go to general page is loaded. So every time the page is loaded, we're going to say navigation, go to page. Actually, you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm going to do a shortcut. I'm going to copy this workflow. All right. So if we right click any action and copy that, you can paste. All right. And then the page is loaded. We want the view to be V1. Now, an important condition to remember on this page is loaded. You have to put in when the page URL is empty, right? Because if you don't do this, if I just leave it like this, look what happens. It's just going to get stuck on view one all the time. I'll never be able to navigate away from this because, right, technically the page is being loaded here and it's always putting it, setting it to the value of v1. So I have to say only when get data from page URL v is empty. Okay. And then I can go back here. I can uncheck that this is visible on page load and I can collapse it when hidden still. And then I'll just program this last button here to make it so that when you click this, we do, we're getting the data from the page URL again. I'm just going to click, do the shortcut way here, copy this over. View one is clicked, get data from page URL. And I'm going to delete this condition here. All right, because this is when the button is clicked. It's a different event. All right, so let's test this out. All right, so right away we got a problem. It's not showing the V equals V1 uh, because I probably didn't put the condition on there. Yep, we didn't put a condition here. So let's do get data from page URL. V is V1. This element is visible. Yes, let's preview that. All right, here we go. V1, right? Check the top here. This is the most important thing. V1, V2, V2, V3, V3, V1. Beautiful. It works perfectly. Now, the important thing, as opposed to custom states, if I refresh this, it retains V2, right? So this is helpful for navigating away from this page or when you refresh the page, uh, this will retain. It's not temporary. It's stored in the URL go to a site like Amazon, you'll notice that there's like a unique URL for every single thing that you do, whether you click a different color for a specific item, that's all done through these URL parameters. So this is a very flexible way of creating unique URLs for basically anything that the user can see, uh, which, which is very handy. You can get very advanced with this. So what did we just go over? We went over first custom states, conditional logic, the beginnings of conditional logic, and finally, URL parameters, which is a way to create unique URLs for different views. So all of these things are useful for building single page mobile applications. Um, try and recreate this. Try and recreate what I did yourself. Make sure that you understand this concept before we speak. And then we can go in and debug anywhere where you got stuck or there was a gap in understanding. All right. I'll talk to you soon.